Hi, I'm Rob Harbert, Professor of Biology at Stonehill College, and I'm coming to you today to talk about a hazardous plant that you might encounter when you're out walking in the woods or doing field work, uh, in particular here in New England. I'm sitting here in Massachusetts, and uh, the one hazardous plant that you need to be aware of if you're spending any kind of time outside is poison ivy. You've probably heard of it before, but it's essential that you understand uh, where it lives and how to recognize it so that you can avoid coming in contact with the plant. Uh, so why do you want to avoid coming in contact with poison ivy? The leaves, stems, roots, flowers, and fruit of this plant produce a toxic substance that if you get it on your skin, uh, it actually soaks into your skin, uh, binds to the cells in your skin, and causes a dermatitis reaction, an itchy rash oftentimes accompanied by blisters that can spread out over the course of days and uh, make you very, very uncomfortable. In extreme cases, you can have a severe allergic reaction to poison ivy. If you've ever had a reaction to poison ivy in the past, that's a possibility. So you want to avoid contact with this plant as much as possible. Uh, and given how common it is in this part of the world, it's going to be important that you know how to spot it wherever you are going. So poison ivy is in the uh, genus Toxicodendron. Toxico comes from the Greek for toxin or toxic, and dendron comes from the Greek for tree. And most of the members of this genus uh, in our part of the world, we're talking about a vine, a woody vine, not a tree, but the, uh, the, that's where the genus name comes from. Uh, this genus is in the family Anacardiaceae, which also includes plants like mangoes and cashews, and then also uh, one that you might encounter, the staghorn and similar sumacs. All of the sumacs belong in this family as well. All of these plants produce a similar class of compounds uh, to what's causing the irritation in poison ivy, but not all of them cause strong reactions in people. Uh, some people who are allergic to mangoes might be allergic to a similar compound as to what causes the reaction in poison ivy. Poison ivy likes to grow in somewhat disturbed environments, in wooded areas that's particularly along trails and along the edges of fields, where there's the edge of a wooded area that might be sometimes mowed or recently in the last uh, number of decades had trees removed. Poison ivy does very well here. It tends to need a lot of sun and space to grow. And so we have a great example here, a nice big stand of poison ivy growing along this uh, corner where a trail comes in to a nice field. And let's take a look at some of these. You might have heard the saying, if you've been told about poison ivy before, leaves of three, let it be. Leaves of three, let it be. You can see some really nice examples here on this plant where we have clusters of what look like three leaves together. Right, leaves of three, leaves of three. There are lots of plants out here that have three or four or five uh, leaves clustered together like this, and not all of them are poison ivy. Most everything we see in this video here is. So you're gonna have to be able to recognize poison ivy when you see it. If you're not sure that a plant's poison ivy, don't touch it. But if you want to be sure, you can look closely at the leaflets. This is a great example here, where we have uh, irregular toothing on these two lower leaflets. So on the outer edge, we have these large teeth at irregular intervals on the outer edge, but not really on the inner edge. And then this center leaflet uh, can be toothed, but it tends to be symmetrical. So here's a really good example of the center there's a really good example of the center leaflet having two symmetric teeth right there. Here we have a great example of when poison ivy is left to its own devices and not cut back year after year after year. We have an enormous vine going up this tree. Let's see if I can give you a little perspective without touching it. Uh, 
there's my hand, and there's the vine. This is maybe four or five inches across. It actually looks like it's two stuck together. This vine, uh, it's covered in these hairy root looking structures, actually stems. Uh, that is poison ivy. And that is a character that you're going to want to recognize because those hairs off the side of the vine uh, will also contain the toxic substance that can cause a reaction. There are several plants that grow in a similar habit to poison ivy that may be easily confused but are not going to pose you any hazard when you're out in the woods. One of those plants is Virginia creeper, the genus Parthenocissus, and uh, it looks very much like poison ivy. We actually have both here in front of us right now, but uh, Virginia creeper always has five leaflets, except when occasionally it doesn't, and sometimes it has three leaflets. And so how do we know the difference? Again, we have poison ivy here, three clear leaflets, nice glossy green leaf. And over here we have Virginia creeper, five leaflets. Here's another one, five leaflets, five leaflets. Virginia creeper is also a vine, it grows in all the same places that poison ivy does, but it is not hazardous. Virginia creeper is going to have leaflets with fairly symmetric toothing on all of them. So you can see over here you have similar teeth here and on that side. And this is perfectly safe to touch. It is in the same family as grapes. Here's another plant that may be easily confused for poison ivy. This is in the genus Rubus, which includes blackberries and raspberries. This is a young one, so I'm not sure which it is. Uh, but the key here is that it has very small and regular teeth on these leaflets. It tends to also come in leaflets of three. But we have these small, regular teeth, fairly symmetric across the leaflet. So this is not poison ivy, but again grows in similar habitats to poison ivy. So we have poison ivy right next to it, right there. So that hopefully will help you know when you come across poison ivy, you know how to recognize it and avoid it.